1970s is uh, considered one of the best decades um, in movie history. You get some of the best, best picture winners in The Godfather. And then you get some of the best sci-fi movies and things like the Al- in Alien. You get some of the best horror movies in like The Exorcist. You get things like uh, early slashers in the end of the decade as well. Uh, but what are some of those titles that kind of got put under the radar during that decade? Well, watch today's video and find out about that. Hey, how's it going, everyone? I'm your host, Chris, as always. Here are her Tastic Reviews. This is the channel where we talk about movies, we do film reviews, we do top fives, we do figure reviews too, hence why you need to figure movies out. Uh, if you're new to this channel, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button so you can get all the notifications and keep up with us on what we're talking about. Uh, if you're returning again, hey, thanks so much for giving me the uh, love and the support that you always give me. I, I always think uh, of you as like some of my best friends because I don't really have any in real life. I only have internet friends. I'm an iPad kid. Uh, <laughs> but uh, other than that, let's kind of go into what we're talking about today, right? So the 1970s is one of my favorite decades. I think it's one of the uh, most people's favorite decades. Some of the best movies that were ever made were during this decade. But for me, like all most times, a lot of my favorite movies aren't like the ones considered the best. Like, yes, I do like The Godfather. My favorite movie is Alien. I understand that. But a lot of my favorite movies are usually those that are kept under the radar or not even talked about enough. So again, here today, I'm going to give you five recommended 1970 films that I think are underrated. These are movies you should be checking out. I'd love to see more conversations on. Before we get started, again, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can keep following um, for our figure reviews and other top fives. And also give me your, uh, you know, 19, favorite 1970s movies in the comments below, okay? So let's get started. First movie on the list, we got to go with a horror movie. I'm a horror fan. If you can't tell with my Scream Factory um, uh, t-shirt here. Bruh. Speaking of Scream Factory, man, they just really need to step it up. <laughs> anyway, let's just go ahead and talk about another label that I really love. And that is Arrow Video. With this 1979 film by Abel Ferreira, uh, who's also known as being very... Uh, experimental would be the nice thing to say with his films. I really enjoy him starring and directing this movie called The Driller Killer. Look at that gnarly steelbook from Arrow Video. I picked this up because it was on sale a long time ago. I got such a deal on it. And um, I love this movie. <laughs> this movie, is, Abel Ferrer plays a struggling artist. He's a painter who's trying to get ends meet with his gallery. And he starts to hallucinate. He starts to freak out against society. And like most 1970s films, it's there, there's such a duality of like what's the right thing to do and how to also survive what's wrong and what's right and what's best for you. Um, a lot of conflicting characters in the 1970s, and The Driller Killer is no exception. So Abel Ferreira, again, he's conflicted. He's trying to make money. He's an artist, um, but he's scared of the fact of becoming homeless to the point where he starts killing homeless people. Um, he literally took the feed the homeless to the homeless to a whole new level with this. And he takes a drill and he starts becoming the driller killer, killing homeless people and eventually just people in general. Um, he honestly is just tormented by this fear and anxiety of becoming on, being on the streets, getting addicted to drugs, um, and it kind of overtakes him. So also there's really great uh, music, like hard rock music in this as well. Uh, this is through Arrow. I think you can stream it also on Tubi. I highly recommend horror slasher fans watch this movie. I think this movie has a lot um, behind the scenes, and I think there's some really gnarly kills in this, as you can tell with this slipcover. I don't even know if I'm allowed to show this on YouTube. Moving on, as anyone who knows me, I'm such a Godzilla fan. I'm such a kaiju monster fan. When we talk about the 1970s, um, it's kind of the end of the Showa era with the terror of Mechagodzilla. But uh, for me... I really enjoy this quintessential 1970s movie because it's, it has Godzilla. It's got some of the stuff we like in the 1970s and the Showa era. And it has a really cool new villain. And that is 1973's Godzilla vs. Gigan. Now, I have this here in a different box because the Criterion um, book is a uh, pain in the ass and the disc gets stuck and get ruined. But 1972's Godzilla vs. Gigan. Gigan is like a space chicken, it looks like. Have you ever seen Robot... Ch or not Robot Chicken. Have you ever seen Family Guy with the chicken as Boba Fett? That's what Gigan kind of looks like. You cannot convince me otherwise. Godzilla vs. Gigan, it has a really great human story too. It's kind of about a newspaper publicist who is being tracked by the, uh, this, uh, this agency that's kind of like a... I want to say like a... A secret society, kind of like dark government trying to shut him up in this story being published. So there's like a lot of like mystery and like, you know, trying to bring down this kind of corrupt um, group of people. Also, Ghidorah shows up 
with uh, Gigan to kind of take over the world um, with this uh, secret group. And at, at the same time, I think Gigan is awesome. He has blades for his hands. And, and it's a 2v1 for a while. But then Aguirre's from the, the second Godzilla movie, um, The Return of Godzilla, shows up. And it's a 2v2 for the first time ever. We have never seen two against two with the kaiju until Godzilla versus uh, Gigan. And then obviously this would become a trend with the Godzilla films where we have more than just two um, kaiju on screen. I mean, before this, technically, Destroy All Monsters, the Avengers um, Godzilla movie obviously had so much more on screen, but they weren't all together all fighting that much, really. So Godzilla vs. Gigan, I think, even if you aren't a fan of these Godzilla movies that are kind of like sumo wrestling and kind of, I guess you'd say corny, but Godzilla vs. Gigan, I think, is the one that takes it pretty serious before he gets a little bit more um, cartoony and more kid-friendly. Definitely a darker entry in the Godzilla franchise. Next movie on the list. This is a Scream Factory release from 1977, directed by... Michael Winner, um, and I think he the last name fits this movie because that is The Sentinel. The Sentinel, um, starring uh, Chris Sarandon and Christina Raines and John Cadeen, and has Burgess Meredith from Rocky as well, from Mickey fame. The Sentinel, basically the two um, couples, the, the couple, they move into an apartment in New York, I believe it is, and what they don't realize is the apartment um, room and the floor is uh, basically the gateway to hell. And the character of Allison Parker, um, she starts to hallucinate. She sees naked old people. She sees possessed dead people in her apartment. She sees um, almost demonic um, things of nature in her apartment. And she gets terrified um, when she moves here. And you get some really great visuals. It's a very creepy movie, The Sentinel. And I don't think this movie gets talked about in the horror community a lot. And I really do think this movie is top notch. Yes, it is a Scream Factory movie, but... When we talk about things like The Exorcist, we talk about The Omen, when we talk about Hereditary, when we talk about, um, you know, so many movies that have to deal with, like, you know, The Gates to Hell, Lucio Fulci-esque type things. The Sentinel is one of those movies that doesn't, you know, hold its punches either. I think this one is a contender for one of the more overlooked horror movies of this uh, decade. And even you can compete it with the movies in the 80s. And I really do think The Sentinel does, you know, hold, it, hold its own against the competition. So check this movie out because this movie definitely is um, a little bit more on the terrifying side. So shout out The Sentinel. Next movie on the list. This is a movie I recently uh, picked up from Kino Lorber and I saw it not that long ago and I still can't get the movie out of my head because it's just so good. That is Robert Blake and my boy Elliot Gold in Bustin from 1973. Elliot Gold, the cool guy with the mustache, plays um, both of Robert Blake and Elliot Gold are partners um, in the LAPD and they're in the Vice Squad, and they start to try busting people, and it leads to a bigger conspiracy, but um, in the 1970s, a lot of police corruption, and they realize no matter how much work they get done, they if they don't play in it, by playing by the books, they're not going to catch um, the perpetrators, and when they you know, don't play by the books, they get punished more than the criminals who did the acts in the first place um, do, so you start to get a conflicting sort of morality in this movie much like the 1970s um where ellie Gold, you know robert blake are starting to realize is this even worth it anymore like we're, we're getting our ass chewed out constantly this movie has great acting great cast members i think it's a top-notch script you get a car chasing all the way uh that ends up on foot you go that goes through um local parts of la so the scenes are great the set pieces are awesome i love the the banter between robert blake and ellie gold and this ellie gold is just the man, he's just perfect in the 1970s. And the ending of this movie is honestly stone cold. It left my jaw dropping. I couldn't believe this movie had that kind of caliber of an ending because I'm just like applauding. Like this is a movie I was watching at home. I was just was like, wow. Like this movie went for it and did it well. So I highly recommend picking this up at the next Kino sale if you can. This is Bustin'. And the final movie, again, it's no secret to people who know in my close circles, another Elliot Gold movie from the 70s. This is 1973. So actually, I got this wrong. This is from 1974. So the next movie came a year before this because Elliot Gold was on a roll with 1973's The Long Goodbye. I love this movie so much. Elliot Gold plays Philip Marlowe, which is basically a private... He's a basically a private investigator. He's like a... He's like a P.I. mixed in with like a Spike Spiegel from um, Cowboy Bebop type, in my opinion. Um, he's always smoking cigarettes and he's just trying to find his cat. And he gets thrown into this consp this web of, you know, deceit 
and, and trying to find out, you know, where this kidnapped person was, where, where his name, it's his neighbor who's gone missing and he's tasked with trying to find him. Um, he's got also um, a bunch of shady characters that he gets thrown into when investigating this case. Um, and he really just wants to, you know, also, you know, get cat food. He, he, he ends up um, running into Sterling Hayden as an author. He gets thrown into like, there's a, there's a cameo by a very young Arnold Schwarzenegger in this movie, a very gross and, and disturbing scene featuring a woman's face in a Coke bottle as well. It just shows like just how dark, you know, humanity can get. Um, for something as simple as just trying to find um, a neighbor who's gone missing. The Long Goodbye is a movie I think you need to check out when it comes to neo-noir, when it comes to just great performances in some of the most underrated movies in the 70s. Ellie Gold by Robert Altman, who is fairly well known as a director, needs to be talked about more. This movie is fantastic. Check this movie out if you can. But other than that, what are some of the underrated 1970 movies in your opinion? What are some movies that, you know, don't get talked about? If I know Alien and Jaws and, and, and you know, Close Encounters and those types of movies uh, get talked about, what are some ones you wish more people had covered uh, or, or talk about more in your circles? Drop it down in the comments down below. Um, but yeah, I also would like you to comment down below. What would be the next decade you'd like me to go ahead and pull top five movies from? Let me know down below in the comments. I'd love to engage with you all more. Don't forget to hit the like, the like, and that subscribe button as well. And hey, remember, my name is Chris here at Hurtastic Reviews. And remember, if you are not watching 1970s films, do you really care about cinema? Other than that, I'll see you next time.